Mehmed Mesa Selimovic was a Bosnian writer, whose novel Death and the Dervish is one of the most important literary works in post-World War II and whole Yugoslavia. He began writing fairly late in his life, first book published when he was 40. Some of the main themes in his works are the relations between individuality and authority, life and death, and other existential problems. I call to witness the ink, the quill, and the script, which flows from the quill. I call to witness the faltering shadows of the sinking evening, the night and all she enlivens, I call to witness the moon when she waxes, and the sunrise when it dawns. I call to witness the resurrection day in the soul that accuses itself. I call to witness time, the beginning and end of all things, to witness that every man always suffers loss. Death is a certainty an inevitable realization, the only thing that we know will befall us. There are no exceptions, no surprises, all paths lead to it. Everything we do is a preparation for it, a preparation that we begin at birth, whimpering with our foreheads against the ground. We never move farther away from death, only closer. But if it is a certainty, then why are we surprised when it comes? If this life is a short passage that lasts only an hour or a day, then why do we fight to prolong it one more day or hour? Worldly life is treacherous, eternity is better. Everything will pass. But what consolation is that? Happiness will pass. Love will pass, life will pass. Is a hope that everything will pass? Everyone says love hurts, but that is not true. Loneliness hurts, rejection hurts, losing someone hurts, envy hurts. Everyone gets these things confused with love. But in reality love is the only thing in this world that covers up all pain and makes someone feel wonderful again. Love is the only thing in this world that does not hurt. Fear is flooding over me, like water. The living know nothing. Teach me, dead ones, how to die without fear, or at least without horror. Because death is senseless, as is life. What is the purpose of piety if there are no temptations to resist? Man is not God, his strength is the ability to restrain his own nature, so I thought, and if he has nothing to restrain, then what are his merits? Your dervish trade is strange. You sell words, which people buy out of fear or habit. He doesn't want to, or doesn't know how to sell words. He can't even sell silence, or talent. And he doesn't care about success. Give me strength to forgive. Because he who forgives is the greatest. And I know I cannot forget. A man is in a tree, and being settled in one place is his misfortune. Do not cry and say, it is a great loss. When milk sours, the loss is greater. I shall not vanish when you see them lay me in the grave. Do the sun and moon vanish when they set? This seems like a death to you, but it is a birth. The grave seems like a prison to you, but the soul has been freed. What grain does not sprout when it is put into the ground? So why do you not believe in the grain of men? 
So what are we? Fools? Miserable wretches? The most complex people in the world. No one is such a joke of history as we are. Only yesterday we were something that we now wish to forget. Yet we have become nothing else. We stopped halfway through, flabbergasted. There is no place we can go to anymore. We are torn off, but not accepted. As a dead end branch that streamed away from Mother River has neither flow, nor confluence it can rejoin. We are too small to be a lake, too big to be sapped by the earth. With an unclear feeling of shame about our ancestry and guilt about our renegade status, we do not want to look into the past, but there is no future to look into. We therefore try to stop the time, terrified with the prospect of whatever solution might come about. Both our brethren and the newcomers despise us, and we defend ourselves with our pride and our hatred. We wanted to preserve ourselves, and that is exactly how we lost the knowledge of our identity. The greatest misery is that we grew fond of this dead end we are mired in and do not want to abandon it. But everything has a price and so does our love for what we are stuck with. We should kill our pasts with each passing day. Blot them out so that they will not hurt. Each present day could thus be endured more easily, it would not be measured against what no longer exists. As things are, specters mix with our lives so that there is neither pure memory nor pure life. They clash and try to strangle each other, continually. 